introduce myself. Previous Hagrid, Keeper of Keys and Crowns at Hogwarts. He held out an enormous hand and shook Harry's whole arm. What about that tea then, eh? He said, rubbing his hands together. I'd not say no to something strong if you got it. Mind his eyes. His eyes fell on the empty crate within the shelf chip bag. Shriveled chip bags in. And he snorted. He bent down over the fireplace. They couldn't see what he was doing, but when he drew back a second later, there was a roaring fire in there. It filled the whole damp hut with flickering light, and Harry found the warmth wash over him as though he'd sunk into a hot bath. The giant sat back down on the sofa, which sagged under his weight, and began talking all sorts of things, taking all sorts of things out of the pockets of his coat. A copper kettle, a squishy, squishy packet of sausages, a poker, a teapot, several chipped mugs, a bottle of some amber liquid that he took a swig from before starting to make tea. Soon the hut was full of the sound and smell of sizzling sausages. Nobody said a thing while the giant was working, but as he slid the first six fat, juicy, slightly burnt sausages from the poker, Dudley fidgeted a little. Uncle Vernon said sharply, Don't touch anything he gives you, Dudley. The giant chuckled darkly. Your great pudding of a son don't need fattening anymore, Dursley. Don't worry. He passed the sausages to Harry, who was so hungry and never tasted anything so wonderful. But he still couldn't take his eyes off the giant. Finally, as nobody seemed to, Seemed about to explain anything, he said. I'm sorry, but I still don't really know who you are. The giant took a gulp of tea and wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. Call me Hagrid, he said. Everyone does. And like I told you, I'm keeper of keys at Hogwarts. You'll know all about Hogwarts, of course. Uh, no, said Harry. Hagrid looked shocked. Sorry, Harry said quickly. Sorry, barked Hagrid. Turning to stare at the Dursleys, who shrank back into the shadows. It's them, them, I should be sorry. I knew you weren't getting your letters, but I never thought you wouldn't even know about Hogwarts. For crying out loud, did you ever wonder where your parents learned it all? Or what? asked Harry. Or what? Hagrid thundered. Now just wait a second. He leapt to his feet in anger. He seemed to fill the whole world. The Dursleys were cowering against the wall. And do you mean to tell me, he growled at the Dursleys, that this boy, this boy knows nothing about, about anything. Harry thought he was going to, going a bit far. He had been to school. After all, his marks weren't bad. I know some things, he said. I can tell you. I can tell you no. Do math and stuff. Stuff. But Hagrid simply waved his hand and said, About our world, I mean. Your world. My world. Your parents' world. What world? Hagrid looked as if he was about to explode. Dursley. He boomed. Uncle Vernon, who had gone very pale, whispered something that sounded like Mimble Wimble. Hagrid stared wildly at Harry. But you must know about your mum and dad, he said. I mean, they're famous. You're famous. What? My mum and dad were famous, were they? Yeah, don't you know? You don't know. Hagrid ran his fingers through his hair, fixing Harry with a bewildered stare. You don't know. Know who you are. He said finally. Uncle Vernon suddenly found his voice. Stop, he commanded. Stop right there, sir. I forbid you to tell the boy anything. A braver man than Vernon Dursley would have quailed under the furious look Hagrid now gave him. When Hagrid spoke, his every syllable trembled with rage. He never told him, never told him what was in the letter. Dumbledore left him. I was there. I saw Dumbledore leave it, Dursley. And you've kept it from him all these years. Kept what from me? Said Harry eagerly. Stop, I forbid you, yelled Uncle Vernon in panic. Aunt Petunia gave a gasp of horror. I'll go boil your heads, both of you, said Hagrid. Harry, you're a wizard. There was 
was a silence inside the hut. Only the sea whistling wind could be heard. I'm a what? gasped Harry. A wizard, of course, said Hagrid, sitting back down on the sofa, which groaned and sank even lower. And a thumping good and I'd say, once you've been trained up a bit. With mum and dad, with a mum and dad like yours, who else would you be? And I reckon it's about time you read your letter. Harry stretched out his hand at last to take the yellowest envelope addressed in emerald green to Mr. H. Potter at the floor, out on the rock, the sea. He pulled the letter out and read, A good school of witchcraft and wizardry. Headmaster Albus Dumbledore, Order of Merlin, First Class, Grand Sword, Chief Warlock, Supreme, Mugwop, International Confed of Wizards. Dear Mr. Potter, we are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted at the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Please find enclosed a list of all the necessary books and equipment. Term begins on September 1st. We await your out by no later than July 31st. Yours sincerely, Minerva McGonagall, Deputy Headmistress. But what, what happened? Harry asked urgently. The anger faded from Harry's face. He looked suddenly anxious. I never expected this, he said in a low, worried voice. I had no idea. When Dumbledore told me there might be trouble getting hold of you. How much? Yeah, I didn't know. Ah, Harry, I don't know if I'm the right person to tell you. But someone's got to. You can't get off to Hogwarts not know, knowing. He threw a dirty look at the Dursleys. Well, it's best you know as much as I can tell you. Mine, I can't tell you everything. It's a great mystery, part of it. He sat down, stared into the fire for a few seconds, and then said, it begins, I suppose, with a with a person called but it's incredible, you know, I don't know his name. Everyone in our world knows. Who? Well, I don't like saying the name if I can help it. No one does. Why not? Golfing gargoyles. Harry people are still scared. Blimey, this is difficult. See, there was a wizard who went bad. As bad as you could go. Worse. Worse than worse. His name was Hagrid gulped, but no words came out. Could you write it down? Harry suggested. Nah, I can't smell it. All right. Voldemort. Hagrid shuddered. Don't make me say it again. Anyway, this, this wizard about 20 years ago now started looking for followers. Can't do. Some were afraid. Some just wanted a bit of his power. Because he was getting himself out, alright? Dark days, Harry. Didn't know to trust. Didn't dare get friendly with a strange wizard. Or witches. Terrible things happened. He was taken over. Of course, some stood up to him. And he killed him. Horribly. One of the only safe places left was Hogwarts. Reckon Dumbledore's the only one you know who was afraid of. Didn't dare try taking the score. Not just then, anyway. Now your mum and dad were as good a witch and wizard as ever known. Head boy and head girl are caught in their day. I suppose the mystery is why you know never tried to get him on his side before. Probably knew they were too close to Dumbledore to want anything to do with the dark side. Maybe he thought he could persuade him. Maybe he just wanted him out of the way. All anyone knows is he turned up to the village where he was all living. On Halloween ten years ago, you were just a year old. When he came to your house, and Hagrid suddenly pulled out a very dirty spotted handkerchief and blew his nose with a sound like a foghorn. Sorry, he said, but it's that sad. Your mum and dad are nicer people. You couldn't find any anyone. <laughs> Anyway, you know who killed him, and then, and this real mystery of the thing, he tried to kill you too. Wanted to make a clean job of it, I suppose. Or maybe he just liked to kill him by then. But he couldn't do it. Never wonder how you got that mark on your forehead. That 
was no ordinary cut. That's what you get when a powerful evil curse touches you. Took over your mum and dad and your house, even, but it didn't work on you. And that's why you're famous, Harry. No one ever lived after you decided to kill them. No one except you. And he killed some of the best witches and wizards of the age. The McKinnons, the Bones, the Bruins, and you was only a baby and you lived. Something very painful was going on in Harry's mind. As Hagrid's story came to a close, he saw again a blinding flash of green light, more clearly than he had ever remembered it before. And he remembered something else for the first time in his life. A high, cold, cruel laugh. Hagrid was watching him sadly. Took you from the room out, ruined house myself, on Dumbledore's orders. Brought you to this lot. Load of old Tosh, said Uncle Vernon. Harry jumped. He had almost forgotten that the Dursleys were there. Uncle Vernon certainly seemed to have got his got back his courage. He was glaring at Hagrid, and his fists were clenched. Now you listen here, boy, he snarled. I accept there's something strange about you. Probably nothing a good beating wouldn't have cured. And as for all of this about your parents, they were weirdos, no denying it. The world's better off without them, in my opinion. I asked for all they got, getting mixed up with these wizarding types. Just what I expected. Always knew they'd come to a sticky end. But at the moment, Hagrid leapt from the sofa and drew a battered pink umbrella from inside his coat, pointing this at Uncle Vernon like a sword. He said, I'm warning you, Dursley. I'm warning you. One more word. In danger of being speared on the end of an umbrella by a bearded giant, Uncle Vernon's courage failed again. He flattened himself against the wall and fell silent. That's better, said Hagrid, breathing heavily and sitting back down on the sofa. With this time, sagged right down to the floor. Harry, meanwhile, still had questions to ask. Hundreds of them, but what happened to... Well, sorry, I mean, you know who. Good question, Harry. Disappeared. Vanished. Some might say he tried to kill you. Makes you even more famous. That's the biggest mystery, see? He was getting more and more powerful. Why'd he go? Some say he died. God's wallop, in my opinion. I don't know if he'd had enough human left in him to die. Some, day, some say he's still out there. But in his time, like, but I don't believe it. People who was on his side came back to ours. Some of them came out of kind of trances. Don't reckon they could have done it if he was coming back. Most of us reckon he's still out there somewhere, but lost his powers. Too weak to carry on. Because something about you finished him, Harry. There was something going on that night he hadn't counted on. I don't know what it was. No one does, but something about you stopped him. Alright. Hagrid looked at Harry with the warmth and respect blazing in his eyes. But Harry, instead of feeling pleased and proud, felt quite sure there had been a horrible mistake. A wizard. Him. How could he possibly be? He'd spent his life being clouded by Dudley and bullied by Uncle Petunia and Uncle Vernon. If he really was a, wo a wizard, why hadn't they been turned into warty toads every time they tried to lock him in his cupboard? If he'd once defeated the greatest sorcerer in the world, how come Dudley had always been able to kick him around like a football? Hagrid said quietly, I think he must have made a mistake. I don't think I can be a wizard. And to his surprise, Hagrid chuckled. Not a wizard, eh? Never made things happen when you was scared or angry. Harry looked into the fire. Now he came to think about it. Every odd thing that he'd ever done, ever made his own, and Uncle Furious with had happened when he, Harry, had been upset or angry. Chased by Dudley's gang, he had somehow found himself out of their reach. Dreading going back to school with that ridiculous haircut, he managed to make it grow back. And the very last time Dudley had hit him, he had, hadn't he got his revenge without realising he was doing it? 
snapped me one in half 